What's up everyone? Welcome to a new video. As you know already in this channel you can find a lot of information about how I trade and some concepts about smart money which are some concepts that I have inside of my strategy. Now as I said already in many other videos or on my Instagram if you follow me already and if you don't make sure to go follow me uh, for also daily tips and to actually follow what I'm doing and my entries and my trades and so on. As I say many times, uh, smart money is a great tool, it has some great concepts, but in my opinion, it is not something that makes you profitable. As you know, right now, it is very, very popular. A lot of traders are using smart money, including myself, keep in mind, but still the 90%, so the majority, 90% of traders, or maybe also 95% of traders are still losing money as I say many, many times. And you might wonder why, why everyone thinks that smart money makes a person profitable, but they still lose money. The reason why is because a system, a system with an edge on the market is missing. Smart money has great concepts. They can be applied. They make you understand how the market moves. But if you don't have a system that is proven to work over time, and it's proven to give you that extra edge in the market, then it is not enough to actually be profitable. Of course, mindset and psychology plays a huge role, and you might argue that 90% of traders also lose because of that, and I agree that it plays a role in, inside of the overall 90% of traders, but this is not the only thing. Keep in mind that uh, smart money needs to be context contextualized inside of your strategy with that being said i hope that you will like this video make, make sure to subscribe because i will drop one or two free videos with free education here on my youtube every single week and if you want to join my course for some extra education and to actually learn how i trade and to follow my setups and my entries then the links are here below i'll see you in the, in the video okay I had the supply too, as you can see. So supply, and we are at a bigger supply here. But <laughs> what is the direction? High highs, high lows, high highs, high lows. I have the supply. I have alert at supply. You go on lower time frames. You look at supply, and what happens? We just go, we just go straight through through it. And when we and when you're going against the trend, you need some major confirmation to actually enter it. So, for example, here, here probably I would have taken it. You go to the upside, you break to the downside, you break all these levels, you find your supply, you enter with you enter maybe with a pending order or whatever. Here. Stop loss aggressive just above the order block or stop loss more safe above the high. The profit lower. But since you know that we are against the trend, by the time we come down and we reach this order block, you know that we might hold it. You need to go risk-free. If you have a good entry, go risk-free. If we come back, it's probably because we are continuing to the upside. So risk-free is the way. Uh, because we are bullish, bullish on all time frames. Here, there is some lower time frames confirmation, but higher time frames are still bullish after this demand area. Um, so, by the time we reach this order block, you go risk free because if we are supposed to continue bearish, this order block will be invalidated. If it is not, it's just because we are continuing to the upside. Supply and demand zones, or the blocks, support and resistance zones, are these essentially the same thing? Um, okay, so support and resistance is the, a different thing. For me, I know there is people who say supply and demand is not the same as all the blocks. Uh, when I say supply and demand, and when I say all the blocks, I refer to the same thing. I refer to the same thing. Just take a look at the course. Those are not support and resistance areas, though.
So a premium or discount area is any area above or below the 0.5 of FIBS, meaning if you hit a supply or demand area above or below, it could be valid to sell or buy. So this will be explained in detail in the 2.0 course, but basically if the trend is up and you're looking to buy, and maybe there is this breakout structure here and you have one demand and two demands and you don't know where you're going to buy if this or this you put your 0 0.5 and this is discounted so you already eliminate the first one and you know that you will do, be looking at the second one same thing vice versa Oh, wait. Okay. If there is a supply here, you won't use that. You will look at the higher one. But this will in, explain in detail uh, in the 2.0 course. But this is basically what it is. Okay. How do you know if the market is just retracing to a zone, for example, uh, or or making a reversal you don't you need to execute the plan and that's it so i understand what you're saying so let's say you have this supply you have this supply area and we are going to the upside at the moment we are retracing to the upside to this supply why is my computer going slow i need to use the other computer for, for next thing so damn very slow actually Anyway, we're going to the upside and this is your last demand. And let's say this is the one hour. And on the five minutes right here, or on the five minutes or three minutes or one minute, you have your schematic for manipulation, reversal, for a continuation to the downside. Okay. And we actually do continue to the downside. But this happens just here. And we are going here. And you don't know if this is just a retracement to this area before reaching it and actually continuing to the upside or just a whole reversal. So first of all, most importantly, you need to check that overall we are bearish and that this is a, and that we are at a key area. So that's already one thing. Second thing, you cannot be 100% sure that we will actually continue bearish. You can have confirmation that we are reversing from here. You can catch some trades even with good restored ratio, like even one to five or more to this area, but you cannot be sure that we will break this area and continue bearish and create a new low. Because we might actually, even if we are bearish on all time frames, this might be the time that finally the market is reversing from for a bullish break of structure and that we will hold this area. So you can't, you just need to execute the plan. If price went above or below the order block, do I forget about the trade or still consider it a spring? If it goes above or below, that order block becomes invalid for me, but I might still trade if there is an order block higher, like today, again. Here was the order block. This order block becomes invalid because we go above it, but above it there is another order block, and if there is confirmation, we can short it from there. Make sense? So you don't consider you don't consider it a spring of this order block. You just consider it a mitigation of the higher order block to continue to the downside. Oh man. <laughs> Before you say that manipulation is the same as spring, including manipulation inside an order block. But you say that there is no liquidity in an order block. So which one should we use? These two things are two completely different things. There is manipulation, or if you want to call it spring, or if you want to call it UTED or whatever, there is manipulation inside the order block. This doesn't mean that there is liquidity inside the order block. 
manipulation is because we get inside the order block and maybe on lower time frames inside the order block we create liquidity so maybe we create equal highs and then we have a spring but this is a grab of liquidity of the equal highs it's not a grab of liquidity of the order block 